Salmon Run, the hectic, challenging co-op mode we all know and love where you work part-time to please a very shady employer. A salmon run is also a real thing that happens in nature, and that inspiration provides some really clever theming for the game mode. Salmon Run's core game mechanic of enemy waves was developed first, and the theming was decided on after. According to an interview, art director Seita Inoue was the first to suggest the salmon theming, because the fish's natural behavior matched the gameplay plan that the team was already going for. During breeding season, millions of salmon travel from their ocean homes to swim up rivers, going against strong currents, rapids, and waterfalls, and avoiding hungry predators like eagles and, yes, bears, all for the mere chance to spawn. Not that kind of spawn. I mean, laying eggs and making baby salmon. I think it's a pretty clever inspiration because on the surface, Splatoon's salmon run doesn't make a lot of sense. Like, why are these salmonids risking life and limb to come up onto the surface, inevitably get splatted, and have their precious eggs stolen by Grisco? Like, what is your goal? The real life salmon run is just as strange and seemingly counterintuitive. Real salmon aren't coming up onto land like Splatoon salmonids, but they are making quite the harrowing journey upstream. In fact, most Pacific salmon use every ounce of energy they have left to reach their spawning grounds, basically guaranteeing that they'll die shortly after, either by being eaten or simply decaying, having spent more energy than their bodies can possibly recover from. A mass of fish swarming to one location and rotting alive. You can see how spawning salmon got the nickname zombie fish. Fading in color, turning white, and appear to be just rotting on the bone while they're swimming. The skin injuries uh, that create a, a source or a site for fungus to start. So they will start uh, growths or not heal wounds much like a zombie. It's exactly what they look like, zombie fish. Suddenly the idea of a salmon related apocalypse makes a lot of sense. They're basically the swimming dead. And Splatoon's salmonids really reflect this zombie-like behavior. I'm especially reminded of the Glowflies mission, but these salmon just don't care how dangerous the journey is or even that they'll probably die from it. They'll do whatever it takes to lay their eggs and just hope that their babies will survive to swim back out to the ocean. It's kind of sad to think about, but it's just their instinct and it's how they've evolved to behave. Whether or not Splatoon salmonids are actually laying their eggs on land, there's clearly a thematic connection here. They must have some motivation that overrides any sense of fear or caution. Kind of like my motivation to squid party with Pearl during the final Splatfest. Probably warranted a bit more caution, but I did not care. I had a goal and I achieved it. Am I the reason Team Order lost? The YouTube channel Rasicus has a really incredible Salmonid lore video with some really interesting developer quotes in it that seemed relevant. In the interview, Splatoon 2 director Yusuke Amano said that the Salmonids are not afraid of death. Seita Inoue said that they think of all living things as being part of this cycle, and even death is something that they're willing to give back to it. This is such an interesting nod to the reality that spawning salmon endure. Obviously I'm sharing these quotes totally out of context because they were the most relevant to my topic, but I highly recommend checking out Rasicus's video to learn about the actual in-game lore stuff that the devs were talking about, which is like super weird and fascinating stuff, so be sure to go watch that after this if you haven't already. On top of that, a horde-based game mode perfectly fits the fact that real salmon make the journey upriver in pulses or bursts often with lulls in between them because they're less likely to be singled out by predators if they're traveling in a group. Just think about like how when you have a disconnect on your team, it feels like everyone is trying to splat you in particular all the time and you have no chance. Strength in numbers. So the Salmon Run theming provides a reasoning for the enemies to be rushing toward you. And it also provides the eggs as a convenient item to be tied into the collecting aspect of the game mode. Both golden eggs and power eggs seem to be based on real salmon eggs, probably at different stages of development or belonging to different species. Power eggs kind of resemble the unfertilized salmon roe that you'd see at a sushi restaurant, while golden eggs perhaps are more like fertilized baby salmon eggs. And just because salmon will die for these eggs doesn't mean they're going down without a fight. In Splatoon, salmonids use mechanized equipment and weapons to protect themselves on their journey. 
The real salmon don't have this luxury, but they do spend most of their adult life building up their strength and body mass so that they can make this truly treacherous journey upriver. Almost like building an armor on their own bodies, which is pretty awesome, but I'm sure they'd rather have a steel eel if they could. And salmon's appearance also changes pretty dramatically when they're getting ready to spawn. Many of them will develop hooked snouts, protruding teeth, sometimes humps, and they change in color from silvery to a deep red and dull green. Pretty obvious artistic inspiration with the salmon is in Splatoon. Now let's talk about Grisco. Between our manager's appearance, his logo, and whatever's going on at Arc Polaris, there's a clear connection being made to real world bears, which are natural predators of salmon that take advantage of salmon runs to have quite the feast. I think it's so cool and interesting that in Splatoon 2, we're kind of taking the bear's perspective in this equation, stopping the salmon in their tracks, preventing them from reaching their goal. And Mr. Grizz's sketchy portrayal raises the question of who's the real bad guy in this game. Well, in real life, neither species is a bad guy. They both play their own important role in the environment. Bears actually depend on a thriving salmon population in order to thrive themselves. And the rest of the ecosystem depends on the discarded leftovers. And come on, just look at these cute cubs. And try not to look at them mutilating the salmon though point is we love bears here, and the Splatoon developers seem to agree on this no bad guy perspective, at least when it comes to the two societies at large. It's not that the squid are the forces of good and the salmonids are the forces of evil, it's more that the squids have their own society and the salmonids have their own different society. And so what, the squid society just happens to have a bear themed workplace that is in conflict with the salmonids? I mean, conflict is after all a necessary part of nature and the circle of life. But is the salmon run mode a simple predator-prey conflict, or is it something more questionable? Because if we're comparing Splatoon to real life, I don't actually think Grizzco would be bears. I mean, bears don't own corporations. Yet. <laughs> what? But humans do, and humans have also unfortunately had some serious detrimental impacts on many of the world's salmon populations. Overfishing them, building dams that block their path to the spawning grounds, pumping greenhouse gases into the atmosphere that lead to increased water temperatures, polluting streams, damaging riverside habitats, the list goes on. Hate to be a downer. <laughs> If anyone's the bad guy in a real life salmon run, it's us. So what does that mean for Splatoon? Well, humans are gone, but a familiarly human-like society remains. And with that remains the potential for environmental harm caused by destructive industrial practices. So I'm not letting Grizzco off the hook. And while I don't personally have a guess as to Mr. Grizz's identity, if the story of Salmon Run is expanded upon in Splatoon 3, I wonder if we'll see any sort of parallel to real life environmental issues caused by humans. This could potentially be connected to the hidden message in the 2020 official art, save our salmons. But no matter what plays out, I'm really excited to learn more about Splatoon salmonids or at least little buddy. By the way, if you happen to love eating salmon, like I do, but you want to help protect real salmon populations, my advice is if you're ever shopping for seafood, look for that MSC certification or use the Seafood Watch app to learn more about what types of salmon are the most sustainable to eat. And that's all for today's video. Let me know what you think in the comments. Do you have any theories about Grizzco or the Salmonids? Are you ever gonna look at salmon the same way again? Because I'm not sure that I will. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so, so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. And I'll see you next time. Stay fresh.